and welcome along to the next video in the sequence showing us installing a new engine in our yacht. Uh, we've reached a stage now where the engine compartment's been prepared and this video shows us actually lifting the engine into place and uh, associated work with getting it installed, all the cabling and things associated with the uh, lifting of the engine in. Okay, so what's in the big box? Well, we're just having a look at some things on the motor. Perhaps the piece that we have to fit into the hole we've just taken the old one out of. So this is a Volvo D260 with uh, two high-powered alternators on it. The engine looks in good shape, uh, no problems with it, but I am going to have to dismantle quite a large amount of the engine to get it small enough to go into the hole I need to put it into. So this is me removing the engine management system, the wiring off the side of the engine and uh, pulling uh, some string through there just to make sure I knew which holes it was going through. Then I took off uh, the heat exchanger at the back end, the exhaust system, turbo. Um, this is the exhaust uh, system coming off. To get it down to the 450 millimeters, I needed to to make sure it goes into the engine bay. Lots of parts still to come off and uh, box up, so I knew where they were. This was going on. I had to make some modifications to the engine bearer, to the cross member that went between the engine bearers, so there was enough space for the uh, engine sump to go in there. It's probably uh, I think it was 50 millimetres I had to reduce that, so a lot of glass work went on in that. Very messy, so I didn't take much video of that. And once it was finished, um, we did some paint work on it. Mary painted the inside of the bilge, so it was all sparkly. You can see that in these pictures here. We all, uh, oh, It's nice to have a clean it's bilge. Mm, so it looks like we might be trapped in for a bit by the oyster, Ocean Spirit of Murray from uh, Gordonson. I think we'll be able to get past if we needed to. So today we're uh, lifting the engine on, brought the engine in on the trailer, the sail drives in the back end there, we're all ready to get it, we've got to get it down through the companion way, the ladders are coming out of the way, steps come out of the way, and down into the uh, main saloon, and then I'll skid it on these high density polythene sheets, just over to the side there. Use the uh, yard crane to lift the engine in. They uh, provide that service on the on the uh, marina. So uh, lift straps and a few hand signals, and we had the engine lifted out of the trailer. Take out a few few bolts that held it onto the onto the support, and then move the car out of the way. Always a good thing to have uh, some communication between you and the crane driver. So we had uh, radio, continuous radio signals to make sure he knew what what I was asking him to do, because he wouldn't be able to see what was actually happening with the engine. Once the engine was lowered down, we, were, we repeated the exercise with the sail drive, skidded it all over to one side so it could be stored there for a few days till we needed it. Progress today includes putting in the, the lifting frame, so we've got that bolted back in, ready for the engine and then the generator. I had to dismantle the existing panel, panel uh, the new one, so we could uh, reinstall it on the uh, pedestal in the cockpit. Where the instruments go on this this uh, control panel the start stop 
is going to go on the binnacle, on the side of the binnacle. Removed a few more other items that needed to come off by inspection to get it into the engine bay. So we're using one end of the engine support just to take some of the weight and then skid it. And we've got it into the door and we'll just try and turn it now so that I turn it this way so that the uh, clutch, the bell housing end of the engine goes in there and then hopefully we'll be able to just ease it across into the bay just tap moving it along this uh, little support thing I've got here and uh, she should slink, swing in over the engine bay so that should be how we're going to get it in here Not much head height to get to the lift in place, so the smallest possible chain lift that we could get was what we bought to uh, to do the installation. This is 500 kilograms capacity. No, it's not going up far enough. This thing's it's just too long. You can see in this shot how tight it was to get it in here, not much clearance, so I had to protect the woodwork from any damage. This is with the engine in, in, in the engine bay, we finally got it through there. So our day's activity has been pretty good. Um, this is the engine almost in its final position. Uh, the engine mount is probably about uh, half, half an inch, maybe an inch forward of where its final position is. And uh, I've got some weight up on the back of the engine here, supported from this lift beam, which has proved very useful actually, um, with having this kind of grid system up here, because I can move supports around. So you can see I've got some spectra there holding the back end of the engine up. You just tie a knot in it and loop it around the, the steelwork and it's, it holds fine. Um, yeah, so, been very useful to be able to support different bits of the engine. So got the engine mounts on, you can see them there, they're not fully bolted up but they've bolted to the engine and fully torqued uh, but the um, the head of the uh, of the engine mount isn't actually torqued up to the correct torque. I'm just going to leave it until I finally get the engine in position and settled and then I can torque that up. And viewed from this side, very similar. Sorry about the noise, it's just a fan heater, it's very cold in here today. Um, so yeah, this is looking pretty good, almost in position. I've got it sitting on some uh, slide mounts, just so I can move it around a bit easier. And the back end, you can see from this side, has got uh, supports from the lifting system on the other side. And I've got a little bit of timber under the back end just to support it, until I get the sail drive in, that's the next task. Uh, so I can get that lined in with the engine and then everything can be fitted together loosely and then we can uh, move the engine backwards and forwards in here uh, to align with the holes here on the engine mount. Then everything can be torqued up a little bit. So that's the next part of the task. So that's the engine from the aft cabin end. So it looks pretty good in there. Uh, supports are looking like they're in the right spot nothing clashing and I think all the fitments that I've got put back on should be okay uh, quite a bit of clearance from the top of the engine block to the underside of the uh, where the sink unit is so I'm pleased about that because it was very tight in the previous one so it's going to be a bit easier to uh, get to the top of the engine if I ever needed to so with the engine in position I lifted manually lifted the sail drive in through the hole at the back of the engine and positioned it uh, over its rubber support and then began to um, line up the holes that go through it. So you can see here I've got the engine mounts bolted into the engine supports and the bolts through the uh, diaphragm at the back of the sail drive. This is a sail drive outside the hull uh, protected with uh, plastic covers and things. I haven't quite got the seal on underneath there but everything else ready. So a lot of wiring still to do at the side of the engine, 
but uh, yeah, we're beginning to put parts back onto the engine. Another cool day today. Um, it's a Sunday, and um, spent probably about half an hour trying to get things back onto the boat that I'd taken off, just to give myself a bit of space. So this is the current state of affair. Um, belt's not on yet for the alternator, but I've got to fit this hose here. This one has to go from the um, water pump, which is over there, has to come underneath the engine, and then it goes to that bronze uh, sea cup just there. And then there's, I've got a TP set up to uh, allow water to go to the forward head and also go along this pipe and into um, the water pump. So I'll have to fit that. It goes underneath the alternator beside the main engine mount. I then removed the A-frame which was used for lifting the engine in and uh, looked to, uh, I left in the beam for the generator to be installed and then that afternoon I planned to take out this ramp which was restricting my access into the engine bay through here. So the engine's looking a little bit more complete. I've got the secondary alternator on and I've started looking at hooking up the fuel lines and the cabling that goes this side of it. I've taken out the A-frame as you can see so what used to fit on the beam up there is gone and the A-frame that fitted in here is gone as well. The engine beginning to start to come together all the components on it uh, fitted most of the pipe work and electrical work doing the instrumentation work now so this is the cabling for the exhaust sensor. Today we're back on the boat busy completing the engine uh, outfitting. We've still got lots to do but it seems to be the smaller jobs now to do. Um, the engine is basically in place, everything's hooked up, it's just the peripherals, little bits of jobs that I hadn't got done in the past, I'm doing now while the engine's out and we're out of the water um, and it's just taking a lot longer than uh, probably I want or anybody else wants but so the job today is to complete the work on the oil extraction pump. So this, this takes oil out to the bottom of the sump, a bit easier than trying to drain it out the bottom. And it's powered. You can see some of these cables snaking down here. I worked on the cables uh, on Friday. It's now Sunday, so I had a day off yesterday. And um, what I've basically done is I've got a button wired up. So it's a press button. Then I've got a power button with a light on it so that in, in the event that uh, you accidentally trip the switch, the motor doesn't go on and drain all the oil out of the water. So, so I think I mean the sump there, actually. Power systems come from this box here. So the power then comes from um, the main takeoffs down here. You can't really see them behind all this wiring. But there's a positive in there and then there's an earth down here that have to be hooked up. So I'm going to do those as well. And the other little project that's part of this is to house these switch units. So I'll show you what th that looks like. So these are the four little pieces that I've got. Uh, these are the ends. There's a top for it, which takes a switch and a, or the two switches. Um, and then two sides to it, uh, so I can uh, basically screw it onto the side of the box that's supporting the pump. So I have to assemble all that with some epoxy and then uh, screw the whole thing into place, assembling, and then the lid basically goes goes on the top of that um, to house the switch and the button. This side of the engine, what have we been up to? Well, um, we've installed the hot water system pipes. So there's a feed here, uh, and a, or a feed here and, a, and an exit there. So they basically flow away to the color, calorifier uh, heat the water and then come back in here when we've got the engine running. Um, I've also hooked up the fuel pipe, so there's one there. That's the, the return for the diesel uh, that comes once it comes past the injectors, goes out there. And then down here, somewhere in here, I've got the feed, so that's where the oil, the uh, diesel oil comes in uh, to run the engine, so gas oil. Uh, I've also fitted a lot of these little blue tabs you'll see here, just on the ends of all the little Jubilee clips because I've cut my hands <clears throat> no many lots of times on there clipped up the throttle cable so that's fitted in place 
and I've also tidied up some of the tubing down here. There's still some cabling to sort out. This uh, cabling is the hot water cabling, so it has to be fixed back into this corner. But I've got a lot of wiring still to do down here. I'll, I'll feed some wiring in uh, into the fuse box and the uh, the uh, bus bars for the positive and negative 12 volt. So I'm going to leave that for a minute until I've got um, access for those cables into there. So aft of the main engine, um, we've been doing a few jobs, main, mainly wiring. Um, so these kind of multicolored Bob, Bob Marley colored cables uh, run up here and they go up into the, um, go up, up this hole in here in the top of the ceiling, they go up the binnacle and to the controls in the, on the side of the binnacle. Um, this black box here is the Volvo Pento um, link into the NEMA 2000 and then into our Raymarine system. So I've been waiting for a cable that will attach this connector, which is NEMA 2000. There's an adapter from that to go into this, which is the backbone cable for the uh, Raymarine system. Also had some discussions with Mary about what we're going to do in here. She came up with a good suggestion. Uh, there is actually between the, the heads of these stainless steel columns uh, there's one missing there but but it basically comes back to this one there's a tabletop made of uh, st of stainless so this is the tabletop and these these um, angles basically fit on top of the columns so it's a almost a square i think uh, made of stainless steel and the problem with it is that the new exhaust system i've put in here of course has to come down b behind this uh, off behind the table and so the table is going to be too tight at this end so um, I was going to completely modify the supports and Mary suggested no uh, it's too much work in that why don't you just um, cut the tabletop and I can cut the tabletop but then I've got to cut into the beam the, the stainless steel box beam that's underneath there so, so, she, so she suggested, why don't we just notch that? So, um, so what I'm, instead of notching this, because there is again there isn't quite enough width here to get get the pipe through, I'm just going to put another piece of box section on the back of here, and cut out the remaining piece of this, and that should uh, enable me to put a scalp into the tabletop that will allow me to get the pipe past. So that's the plan. So I'm waiting for the stainless to come. Here in the in the bowels of the engine room so we've got the I've, I've basically fixed all the fittings in here the T the, um, the valve itself was on the engine so that was sealed and then another little valve which runs away to the uh, and uh, the exhaust from the so the intake from the uh, seawater comes up here goes over the top of the engine and goes over the other side and then returns to go into um, this pipe here which is the intake for the seawater pump and this side comes into a strainer which the original engine never had but i fitted it in here so it's easy to see and again the pipes go back and across the other side of the engine my uh, engineer friend robert uh, suggested i put this in even though it wasn't on the original engine he said it's good practice and the um, Volvo instruction manuals also say to put one of these in to filter the water as it comes in. It has a kind of strainer on the bottom of the uh, sail drive leg, but uh, not a very coarse filter. It would probably stop fish and crabs and weed and stuff coming in, but not smaller particles. Engine alternator wired in. I've also got the uh, header tank for the cooling system in position. And this is the engine management system which I've decided to mount off the engine it's normally mounted on the side of the engine as you can see here and I put it on the a, a special support here so it doesn't attract all the vibration you get when the engine's running that appears to uh, make it last longer I've spoken to my friend Robert to uh, ask him if he'll come over and spend 10 minutes just having a go over the engine make sure there's nothing that I've forgotten left I need to change uh, in the short term so that we can start the engine because I think we're basically at that point where I need to test the engine.
Good day yesterday. We uh, had uh, my friend, uh, the engineer, over to have a look at the engine installation. And uh, <coughs> for two or three little items, he uh, okayed that. And uh, yesterday we ran the engine up and it started second push of the button. So it drew the fuel through and as soon as it got fuel it went. Uh, so the only items he picked up on um, the engine that I need to sort are an extra lock nut on here, uh, which is the throttle cable, just to stop it turning if something happened. There was one leak on the uh, exhaust system where the temperature sensor goes in but uh, it was easy to fix. The last weekend been pretty busy. We have uh, anti-fouled the boat, we've uh, polished it, Mary's polished it and uh, I've finished off everything that I wanted to do in the engine bay. So all the cables are tucked away nicely apart from this one which is going to be pulled back and uh, I've got the cable trays above here got the um, water sampler for the um, desalinator in there um, we've run the engine a couple of times so everything okay fire extinguisher back in here I've connected up all the hosing in here the wiring is, is hooked up on the side here uh, I've got most of the um, water hosing in here and tightened up all the joints We've got most of the engine jobs finished now, so uh, we've run it up to temperature, all seems good with it. We've still got an issue with the oil pressure sensor. There is pressure at the engine, but the sensor doesn't seem to talk to the uh, gauges we put in or uh, to the NEMA 2000 system that we, uh, we use to link it in. So um, I'm in discussions with uh, our friends at Gold Narrow and they think it could be because it's a very simple system on the boat and they don't think that sensor actually will talk to the NEMA 2000 it's designed I think for more complicated uh, engines than we've got but we'll see how it goes. Hi, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, not an easy task to get an engine into a boat like this. It was certainly quite congested and we had to use um, quite a number of bits of extra equipment now to make like the, the beams and, and A-frames um, but they did eventually go in and I think my kind of read on the situation would be if you're going to do something like that make sure you've got everything measured and you don't have any surprises when you come to install it because the engine's pretty heavy and if you dropped it or got yourself trapped somehow and it, you could injure yourself quite badly so worth planning uh, ahead to make sure you've got everything in place.